There are some things that computers are much better than humans at, for example, math. There might be some exceptions to this rule where maybe you can find a math expert that is able to solve some very specific, fairly simple equations faster than you would on a calculator. But generally, as problems become more complex, the computer's speed and its ability to remember all of the different variables involved barely changes while the humans sharply declines. But if you've done any programming that involves decimals, or as we're going to pretty much call them from here out, floating point numbers, your belief in a computer's mathematics ability will start to decline just like people's ability to do it. So let's take a look at my Python interpreter here to show what I mean. So math with integers works exactly as you expect it to. 3 plus 7 equals 10, and 3 plus 7 times 6 equals 45. So the arithmetic and order of operations is programmed correctly. But when I try to do some math with floating point numbers like 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1, I get this nonsense here. So it happens with most numbers that have a decimal like, uh, you know, 1.1 plus 0 0.05. We get a similar thing that happens. So how come when I introduce decimal numbers, the math starts to fall apart? Well, first, we have to understand the difference between how computers and humans do math. So us humans, we use base 10, probably because most people have 10 fingers, which means 10 different numbers. So zero through nine can fit into any given decimal place. And each digit that you increment to the left represents a multiple of 10. So you're going ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. And each decimal point to the right represents a division of 10. So one tenth, one hundredth, one thousandth, and so on. Now in our base 10 system, we can only actually express fractions that use a prime factor of the base. So the base factors of 10 are five and two. So, and that means that uh, one half, one fourth, one fifth, one eighth, one tenth, and so on, those can all be expressed properly in decimal because the denominations are all going to be using prime factors of 10. So if you take a fraction that can't be cleanly expressed in base 10, like say one third, you know, you can try to write it out. You can do 0.3, but of course, three times 0.3 only equals 0.9. So maybe you'll do 0.33, but 0.33 times three is 0.99. One third is a number that can get closer to the correct value, but never quite there the more decimal places that you add. Same thing for two thirds and one ninth. Now computers, they use binary or base two, which means each decimal place for a computer can only be zero or one. Now this is fine for representing integers, it just requires more decimal places uh, than with base 10 for most numbers at least. So for example, eight represented in binary is one zero zero zero. So you essentially need four decimal places in base two to represent it. 255 is one 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 one. So you need eight decimal places to represent 255. And it also happens to be the highest number that you can fit inside of eight decimal places, just like how 99 would be the highest number that you can fit in two decimal places within base 10. So each time that you add another decimal place to the left in base two, the maximum value doubles. And each time that you go to the right, the value halves. So instead of multiplying and dividing by 10, uh, like with base 10, we're doubling. So in binary, uh, we can cleanly express fractions like one half, one fourth, one eighth, and so on, because those are just half, half, half. Uh, but numbers like one fifth or one tenth, these cannot be cleanly expressed. So it's the same situation as our one third in base 10. Uh, and when used, they're going to trip the computer up. So when we run into a number that is impossible to represent as a decimal, we have to do some rounding because 
us humans, we obviously wouldn't want to just keep writing 0 0.3333333333 till the end of time. Uh, in computers, they also have a limited amount of space that they can use to represent numbers. Uh, now this is something that people are pretty good at, the whole rounding process. Uh, like say for example that you had three friends that each wanted one third of a Monero and then one third of a Bitcoin. So you could probably figure out how to round each of these appropriately based off of their value. So a Monero is worth about $166. So you would probably want to round this to the hundredths place or the thousandth place uh, just to keep everyone happy because uh, you know, you're going to end up giving two of your friends 0.333 of a Monero, and then one friend is going to get 0.334 if you intend to give away the whole thing. But since we're all the way out here at the hundredth place, uh, the difference in value is pretty minuscule. I mean, it's gonna be what, maybe a dollar or so? Uh, actually, less than that, it would be about 16 cents. So the guy who's getting 0.334 is getting 16 cents more. Uh, and that should be a small enough value that everyone's gonna be happy and not bicker over the difference. Um, but if we're going to be dividing up that Bitcoin, then obviously that's worth a lot more. Bitcoin, I think, is worth about $40,000. It might have dipped a little bit today. Uh, so you might have to go more extreme with this. You might have to go out into the 10,000th place or even the uh, 100,000th place to keep them happy. And so we're gonna divide it up uh, something like 0 0.333334, you know, maybe that will be enough to keep everybody happy so that there's not too big of a difference uh, in that Bitcoin. Now, rounding is a little bit trickier to do on a computer because remember, everything is going to be represented as a zero or a one, including decimals. So, you know, 0 0.2 in binary is actually 0 0.00110011011 repeating forever because, you know, it can't be properly represented. It's just like our 0.333 problem in base 10. Uh, so this repeating, it has to get cut off somewhere. It could be at the 32nd bit. It might be at the 64th bit, but like I said, there's gonna be no infinite decimals even in binary. So when I try to add 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 or 0 0.2, <laughs> we end up getting this uh, 0 0.3 with a whole bunch of zeros and then there's a 0.4 at the end that's something like the 10 or 100 trillionth decimal place. Uh, this is the result of a rounding error. And it's also the same reason why 0 0.3 times 3 gives us 0 0.899999999999 and this would go on uh, forever. So it's another rounding error that just results in us getting um, like a very insignificantly small decimal point lower than what we wanted to get. But, you know, that can still uh, create some problems because, for example, if we try to say uh, 0 0.3 times 3 is equal to 0 0.9, we're going to get false because <laughs> 0 0.99999 continuing doesn't actually equal 0 0.9. It's all just rounding errors, and you're going to run into it a lot when working with floating point numbers because most, uh, most fractions are really difficult to represent precisely in binary. Um, so uh, we know why this happens. How do we actually write software that isn't broken by this? Now there's a number of options that are available to us, and the most simple one is probably to just avoid using floats as much as possible. So say for example that you were writing some software that was going to be used on a point of sale system. Uh, one of the things that you're going to need to do is calculate how much change the cashier should give to the customer at the end of a transaction. Since our money always goes to the 100th place, you could use integers to represent the cost of an item and the amount of money that the customer is giving you if you just multiply by 100, that's going to eliminate your decimal place completely. 
Then after you figured out uh, how much the customers changes, divide that number by 100 and you have the result. So uh, let's say that if our customer is paying with $11.90, we'll write that as 1199. Uh, and then let's say that they're purchasing an item that's gonna cost $11.80, so we'll write that as 1180. And then we're going to divide that result by 100, and you get their correct change, 10 cents. Another option would be to use Python's uh, format option to represent it as a string, and uh, that way you can just cut it off at whatever the necessary decimal point is. So uh, the way that we would do this with the same transaction is like this. So we're defining variable A, and then we're using the format function 11.90 minus 11.80, and then this is where we're saying to format it out to the second decimal place, all right? And um, since we did it as a variable, we can print A to see what its value is. And then we see that A is 0 0.10. Now, if you're going to do it this way, um, I guess it's not really as elegant. It, it, it sort of depends on what situation you're in, but you're creating a different type here. So for example, you couldn't then do uh, A plus four because you're going to get this type error. You can't add an integer to a string. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, if you're going to end up using A for any more uh, transactions or any more math in the program, what you're gonna to want to do is convert it to a float first, and then you can add a number to it. And there we go, we get 4.1. So now you know why computers mess up decimals sometimes. It's not anything to do with your code or your computer. It's just how floating point numbers work.